Praise. Hello. Assalamu alaikum and Rashunta sir. I'm going to take the one to the one. Acha. Not a thing of Bajani. I'm going to take the one. There are calling a question online. Yes. Another way. Assalamu alaikum, dear student. Today our classes is about open fractures and its communication management. How we can teach open fractures. Very often in written exam, it's denominated the management of open fractures. What is open fracture? Open fracture is a breaking in the skin and underlying soft tissue, leading directly into or communicating with the fracture and its hematoma. And on student, you are on your exam, you have to memorize several definitions so you can shortly discuss when a fracture communicate exterior. It's called open fracture. Um, I will repeat again. When a fracture communicate exterior is called open fracture. How we can classify it open fracture? Castillo and Anderson. Castillo and Anderson they discuss several classific classification. That is Type 1. Type 1 means when the wound size is uh, less than 1 centimeter. Gashler Anderson classification is here. We can show the model of tibia, however, applied to the all type of open infection. Emphasis on the wound size. Crash injury associated with small wound, sharp injury associated with with large wound. Now it is better to emphasize degree of soft tissue injury, degree of contamination. Degree of soft tissue injury and degree of contamination. They are classified into three types, Castro type 1, 2 and 3. 3 again divided into 3A, B, See, type one. One when the wound size less than one centimeter, inside out injury, clean wound, minimum soft tissue injury, minimum contamination, no significant terrestrial stripping. I will repeat again. Wound size less than one centimeter, less contamination, less soft tissue injury, and no significant crystal STP. Gastro type 2. Two moderate soft tissue damage outside in high energy, some necrotic muscle, some peristyl STP. Wound size more than 1 cm, some box is eaten less than 3 cm, some is eaten less than 1 10 cm. That means wound size is more than one centimeter and and less than ten centimeters. Moderate soft tissue injury, moderate contamination, some peristyl STP. Okay. Type three. Three 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 means three again divided into three A, B, and C. Three A three. Severe soft tissue injury, severe contamination. Wound size more than ten centimeters. It is called type three. Three again divided into 3A, B, and C. 3A, 
high energy you can see the picture also high energy outside in extensive muscle demineralization bone coverage in existing subtissue a little bit again and is high energy outside in extensive muscle demineralization bone coverage with existing subtissue that means the subtissue we can cover the amount of soft tissue damage we can cover the wound is called type 3a and 3b bone covers with existing soft tissue okay type 3b open tissue here high energy outside in that means from flexible outside in the extensive muscle deposition required a flap for bone coverage and soft tissue closure it is still sticky means bone is opened that means bone is open during our pg pg course our tissue bone is across and bone is taking air from outside mane banglay bole bone se batash lagta hai mane required a flap for bone coverage and soft tissue closures okay required a flap for bone coverage and soft Type 3C, all 3C, all are same. Here is major vascular injury which needs immediate support. High energy, increased risk of amputation and infection. Any grade, any grade with major vascular injury requiring repair. Any, any grade with major vascular injury. Any grade that means type 1, 2, 3. Asset with vascular injury is called type G open fracture. Okay. Any grade, any grade. That means less than one. That means one size is less than less than one centimeter. Asset with vascular injury is also called type G C. And equal immediate vascular surgery. Okay. Very, very often in written exam, yeah, discuss the management of operant fracture. When it is open, then you can define it is when, when a fracture communicate exterior is called open fracture. And there is two heading: management of the wound and management of the fracture. Wound management needs immediate IV fluid, distance prophylaxis, IV antibiotics, and Surgical debridement or toileting. Debridement means the removal of dead and debridalized tissue. Toileting means removal of all contaminated materials. And the, I repeat, I, I, I am again repeating, management of the wound and management of the fracture. Wound management is need immediate IV fluid, IV antibiotics, blood transfusion, surgical toileting. And surgical for fracture management, need immediate immobilization of the fracture by partial spike and plaster or external fibrillator or any other device. Okay. Infection rate. Infection rate. Infection. In in our our orthopedic surgery, infection means osteo. Now we put it. My yes, osteomatis is called on the infection of the bone and bone marrow. So it is severe than soft tissue. Grade of soft tissue injury correlated with infection and fracture. Infection rate type one is up to two percent. Type grade two, type two, two to seven percent. Three A, ten to twenty-five percent. Three B, ten to fifty percent. And three C, twenty-five to fifty percent. Okay, fracture healing needs more time. Okay. And it, now we can discuss about exam-oriented discussion. I have some question. Question: uh, Final professional examination, January 7, 2017, curriculum 2006. In our orthopedic surgery, you are the examiner. Best very soon, you are examiner. Your examiner, your examination is marking the. Door. 
one question is write down the radiological type of fracture. Radiological type of fracture means how we can classify fracture radiologically. This is transverse fracture. When the fracture line is transverse, oblique. When the fracture line is oblique. And spiral. When the fracture is another type of classification is commutated fracture. When the fracture more than two pieces, it is called commutated fracture. Main heading. Transverse fracture, oblique fracture, spiral fracture. And another is commutated fracture. When the fracture communicates exterior. Sorry, uh, uh, fracture with butterfly fragment and fracture communicate communicative fracture. Communicate communicating fracture when the fracture more than two piece. And another type is sometimes told is complex fracture. When the fracture is extended in the articular surface. It's called complex fracture. Please immediate reduction and articular surface real element. Otherwise, can lead to osteoarthritis. Okay. Then remember the causes of pathological fracture. The portion of the question is write down the radiological type of fracture and enumerate the causes of pathological fracture. Pathological fracture means the fracture of a bone defined as a pathological fracture. Defined as a fracture of a bone, the bone already been diseased. The bone which previously infected or diseased this bone fracture is called pathological fracture. So definition is pathological fracture, fracture of a bone, the bone already been diseased. What are the causes? So we can write it congenital, infective, metabolic, infection, others and malignancy. Congenital, you know that there is osteogenesis imperfect. Congenital, the bone is the bone, long bone is several fracture during delivery and repeatedly the bone is fractured. This is called osteogenesis imperfecta, congenital. Why osteogenesis imperfecta? Due to defect in type 1 collagen. In our, our bone, in human bone, there is different collagen and animal bone is another, another collagen. Animal, cows, cows, son, cow, cows, and goat. Before they are taking mother's milk, they can run, but in human baby can walk nine to eighteen months. So our collagen is different. So when deep type defect in type one collagen is to osteogenesis It is a cause of pathological fracture. The one cause is congenital. Another one is infective. Infective means infection, osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, plus metabolic. Metabolic means when the bone is osteoporosis, this is metabolic cause. Neuro uh, malignancy. Osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and others. Others means Bouchard's disease, any cause of ankylosing spondylitis is the cause of pathological fracture. Okay. The next question is what are the complications of supracondylar fracture of humerus? Supracondylar fracture complication. Any fracture complication, when you discuss, it is the, some general complication, some local complication. General complication. For all bone is same, blood loss, hemorrhage, shock. Yes. But the emphasis is local complication. Local complication again divided into two types. Immediate and late. It's called immediate or early complication. Early. Supramundral region is remains in the cubital fossa. So structure remains in the cubital fossa. What are the tracer? Immediate complication injury to the brachiolateral because brachiolateral remains in the middle portion of the elbow. Then 
injury to the brachial artery, injury to the median nerve because median nerve lies here, and injury to the biceps tendon, and injury to the ulnar nerve which lies behind the medial epicondyle, injury to the radial nerve which passes behind the radial neck and enters the spinator muscle and surrounding soft tissue. If, you, if anybody apply tight cluster or tight bandage or 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 ill advice any bamboo stick, this they develop compartment syndrome. So the immediate complication is immediate or early complication. Again, I, I repeat. Injury to the brachial artery, injury to the median nerve, injury to the ulnar nerve, injury to the radial nerve, injury to the biceps tendon, compartment syndrome, and, and lastly, injury to the surrounding soft tissue. Because any trauma, any surrounding soft tissue is injured. That's quick, but quickly later, but not earlier. Okay? And late complication. Late complication means supramandular region is metaphysical bone, heals faster. So it may be unreduced position if you apply any bamboo stick or any message and develop malunion. Malunion. Malunion means union of a bone but in mal anatomic position. Union of a bone in non anatomic position it is called malunion. Malunion. One malignant develops cutis varus or cutis varus. Stiffness of the elbow joint. Some people we keep we apply plaster and, and keep it in elbow flex position 90 degree to 120 degree. But some people apply some bandage, local bandage, and keep the elbow in stiff position. Then develop stiffness of the elbow. Then if tight bandage is applied, then develop BIC. Means ischemic contractures. Another one complication is tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Tardy, the artist tardy is a late complication of ulnar nerve. Some people apply masses and the bone extra hematoma is quite and it's uh, from bones. It's called myositis. Again, the late complication is malunion, stiffness varus or valgus, stiffness of the elbow joint, bokmanishmi contraction, myositis, osmosis, and tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Another question is: Write in short the treatment of acute postpyogenic osteomyelitis in children of less than 48 hours duration. That means acute osteomyelitis treatment plan. Acute osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis means infection of the bone and bone marrow. Acute osteomyelitis, one patient present within 72 hours of infection is called acute osteomyelitis. In management is or treatment plan is needs first is counseling. Counseling of the patient and guard guardian is baby. So needs treatment of a counseling of a guardian. Those are first treatment relatives. It is a, an orthopedic emergency. It is an infection. We will start treatment. If no improvement, then we go for surgery. But the treatment plan counseling. First is first is counseling, counseling, counseling. Then IV fluid because we are not taking food. IV fluid and at the same time blood sent for culture and sensitivity, blood transmission and rest of the part. If in the lower limb we can apply the long leg back slab, if in the upper limb we can apply long arm back slab and or simply one pillow below the extremity, upper limb or lower limb and counseling we can see that we can we will start antibiotic and we will follow up. If no improvement, then we go for surgery. 
already pass evolodermis abscess, then we go for immediate surgery or pass removal. Okay. Then which antibiotic we should preferably glucloxacillin. How many days? Total duration is six weeks. First two weeks IV. Next three weeks orally. In our country, osteomyelitis people develop in poor people because the less immunity. So, how many days at least IV antibiotic? At least minimum five days. Minimum five days. Okay. Minimum five days of IV antibiotic. Then next of the five weeks oral. Okay. Another question we can discuss. Write down the clinical feature of giant cell tumor of a bone. Clinical feature of giant cell tumor of a bone. Giant cell tumor is, is a locally malignant tumor of okay. locally malignant. Then we then examiner will ask what are the other locally malignant? Amyloblastoma, melanoma. Okay. What are the complications? Write down the clinical feature of giant cell tumor. Clinical feature. Giant cell develop giant means cell size is increase and number of nucleus is move. It's called giant. Giant. Then we then examiner asks what are the types of giant cell? It's physiological and pathological. Physiological means syncytia topoblast, me megakaryocyte, and pathological. Pathological means in rheumatoid arthritis. We found Asher models in tuberculosis. We found giant cell. We found Langer Langer cell and distinct work cell. We found in non Hodgkin lymphoma. Clinical feature: giant cell tumor develops in the growing end of the long bone after fusion of growth. That means it is 20 to 40 years. And bone is expanded, slowly growing and locally malignant, slowly growing. Patient sometimes develops after pathological fracture. Patient sometimes this is just swelling but no problem, suddenly it develops swelling, long duration. So, this is long duration and growing end. That means lower end of the radius, upper end of the humerus, around the knee. That means lower end of the femur. The tibia or upper end of the fibula, but no bone is immune for the cell tumor. Any bone can take place, okay. and it is slowly growing and it is expansive, eccentric, and radiologically we can see it is soap bubble in appearance. Soap bubble appearance. So that means we, when you washing the cloth, it is a soap bubble. So probably in Write down the radiological pressure of osteosarcoma. Another question is write down the radiological pressure of osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. Radiological pressure. Both Ewing sarcoma and osteosarcoma, osteosarcoma both are primary malignant, malignant bone tumor. When we classify tumor primary and malignant tumor, we want classified into two types. Primary malignant tumor, secondary malignant tumor. Primary malignant tumor is osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, multiple myeloma, chondrosarcoma, pyrosarcoma. There is five. There are five. Osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, multiple myeloma, chondrosarcoma, pyrosarcoma. And secondary, secondary take origin from another place. What is the site? Thyroid. You can tell it from above donors, thyroid, breast, lungs. Me posted jaded. Okay. Radiological fissure, osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma, radiological fissure of osteosarcoma. It is osteolytic and osteoblastic because it is bone destroying and bone forming. Sun burst in appearance. Sun burst. If you, see, you can see the, in the morning, morning sun, you cannot see, see the sun. So it is some bursting appearance, 
and osteolytic and osteoblastic and also Codman's triangle form. What are the Codman triangles? There is formation of a triangle. One, ang one, one angle is on the cortex of the bone, another is perpendicular to the tumor and two are the two point is joining. Join the two, two point, two end and you will have a triangle which is called Codman's triangle. Okay. Then again, examiner can ask, what are the, uh, where we can form the Codman's triangle? Again, there is osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and osteomyelitis. Okay. Osteo, uh, when, tell us, student, they are their student, when we can found Ewing uh, Codman's triangle, there is osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and osteomyelitis. Again, how triangle form? One is the cortex, another one is tumor, perpendicular to the tumor, and another is meeting the, joining the two points. This is called osteosarcoma always in the metaphysis of the long bone around the knee joint. That means right of the femur and upper of the tibia is most common. But another place can take place. No bone is immune for any disease. Okay? Then Ewing sarcoma. What is Ewing sarcoma? Ewing sarcoma. Ewing sarcoma takes origin from endothelium of the bone. It is onion, radiologically, it is onion peel in appearance and takes place in the diaphysis of the long bone. That means diaphysis of the tibia, diaphysis of the tumor, and radius ulna or humerus. And on, radiologically, onion peel appearance and Codman's triangle is found. It is called here, here, radiologically found on anvil appearance and osteosarcoma we found it is sun osteolytic and osteoblastic and also the sun must appearance. Okay. Then we can discuss about the <coughs> right down the treatment option of fracture neck in adult, fracture neck in elderly, and intertogonal fracture in all is the treatment option number is 1.5 treatment option of fracture neck femur in adult 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 means in we can consider adult up to 60 years from 14 years to 16 years you can consider this is adult all age neck femur. We, 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 we want to preserve the neck and we apply cannulated hip screw, three cannulated hip screw and DSS. This is the option of of, of, of fracture neck femur in adults. What are the options? One is cannulated hip, three cannulated hip screw and another one is Dynamic hip screw that means DSS. Fraction neck femur in elderly. Elderly means we can consider the age is more than 60. And in this age, fraction neck femur in elderly, one of treatment option is replacement hemiarthroplasty. Replacement that means there is chance of head vascular neck process. So we we remove the head and we apply prosthesis. The name of operation is Replacement hemiarthroplasty, R H A. Replacement hemiarthroplasty. Replacement means we replacing the head. Hemi means only the head of the femur is replacing. Acetabulum is intact. Okay. Prosthesis. The name of instrument is prosthesis. Prosthesis. The instrument we use for missing part of the body is called prosthesis. And some we are using orthosis. One elder people using one stick. Orthosis means there is one device that used for weak part of the body. Like one one elderly man is using a stick for walking. This stick is called orthosis. Okay. Intertokentric fracture in all is. Intertokentric fracture in all is treatment option is treatment option is dynamic hip screw. That means DHS in all is. In case of children, 
is pediatric DHS in case of adult adult DHS. Another option is polyintertubular fracture is PFN proximal femoral nail PFN. Sometimes you know, a different type of anesthesia. There is anesthesia question is they will teach you anesthesia this bus, but in the exam we ask you the, what are the different type of anesthesia. You can tell it's general anesthesia and regional anesthesia. General anesthesia when patient is full we anesthesia and low regional anesthesia means spinal anesthesia, brachial block, ankle block. Skin, uh, block, uh, wrist block. What are the complications of spinal anesthesia? All type of anesthesia complication is during operation and post operation. During operation, cardiac arrest, shock, anaphylactic reaction. Post operative complication is spinal, spinal anesthesia, spinal headache, retention of urine. Sometimes, uh, for spinal minus minimize the spinal complication, we use a pillow that means we are using at least 500 ml of fluid before anesthesia. Complication of spinal anesthesia, then we can ask which space we can apply. We can say lump, so here is lump during the spinal spine of the number one and two. Another question is, a 45 years old man, a 45 year old man presented with pain in both calf muscles while walking and a non-healing ulcer in his left foot, in his left foot. What are the other history we will take from this patient? We will take the smoking history because when the patient is present with calf pain and walking, while walking and non-healing ulcer, Left foot. If it is not mentioned on healing ulcer, then you can consider it is a spinal cord injury, that means PLID, prolapse, lumbar intervertebral disc. When it is mentioned, this pain in the calf muscle while working and non healing ulcer, left foot, then you can consider it is a peripheral vascular disease, PPT. What are the other history we will take from this patient? Smoking history and the claudication distance. How far working? Patient feel pain, and at that time, what are the what are the what are, at that time patient how patient relieved from this symptom? Patient for PBT patient will tell, I can take rest, I can stand, and then after a few minutes, it is pain is relieved. But in PLID patient, I can take seat. Okay. In the investigation, you suggest. This your diagnosis. This one one investigation that means duplex ultrasonography or color Doppler. Same same, but this is two name it's color Doppler or duplex duplex. Write down your treatment plan of this patient. Treatment plan depends on what are the what is the report of ultrasonography. If it is mentioned more than 75% is blocked, patient first counseling needs for operation. But it is around 50% then we can counseling the patient stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking. If you want to get your box, which one you want, either food or cigarette. Everybody, I think everybody at the time patient want, I, I want my food. Then stop smoking, use vasodilator. That means clonazin or clopid is used for vasodilation. And patient advice for take rest in claudication distance. That means J2 distance of heart lay up not better could be. If patient is a walking person, that means 
you have to for, for earning to work work then we can advise patient stop more working okay since your okay if, uh, if it is arterial occlusion more than 75 percent then advice is this amputation Another question, this question is July 2016. Classify flexor neck femurs. Classify flexor neck femurs. The Gartland classification is, radiological classification is Type 1 is incomplete and undisplaced fracture. Type 2 is complete and undisplaced fracture. Type 3 is complete with partial displacement. Type 4 is complete with fracture with rotation. Again, I repeat again. Type 1 is incomplete and undisplaced. Type 2 is complete fracture with without displacement. Type 1 is com uh, incomplete fracture without displacement. Type 2 is complete fracture without displacement. Type 3 is complete fracture with partial displacement. Type 4 is complete fracture with rotation. Okay. Then next question is write down the causes of non-union. Non-union means, non means when Nine months has elapsed since fracture, and there is no cognitive sign of healing, radiological and clinically for the last three consecutive months. So, if we, we want to say fracture non-union, at least need nine months. So, again, I repeat again: one fracture non-union has elapsed since fracture. Nine month elapsed since fracture, and there is no progressive sign of healing, radiologically and clinically, for the last three months. Okay. Non-union causes of non-union. Non-union non -union cause of non-union is one is patient cause, one is surgeon cause, one is general cause. Patient cause means patient take plaster in a good time. It's one half month patient to two weeks only. This patient, patient, patient himself remove plaster or patient is immunocompromised patient, that means patient suffering from diabetes mellitus or immunosuppressive disease like diabetes and tuberculosis. And patient is irradiation patient, that means patient is taking radiation from for any, many, any, many means. Another one is surgeon cause. Needs, if the, needs plaster, to plaster three months, but surgeon remove plaster after one month. Only weight bearing, only mobilization, only before immune. This causes of immune. Another cause is, is soft tissue interposition. Soft tissue interposition in between the fracture and infection. Your patient develop osteomyelitis in case of open fracture. Patient develop infection and osteomyelitis, and this needs develop non-union and distraction of the fracture. Distraction that means needs weight for immobilization. We uh, need weight uh, 2.5 kg. We have to remove the patient develop like that. Yeah. So this is causes of non-union. Okay. What do you know? What do you mean by interventional radiology? Give example of its diagnostic and therapeutic use. Interventional radiology means for radiology, any IPU or any or, or any dry use like any cholidocol, after cholidocol lithotomy, we use cholangiography, T-tube cholangiography. And for 
for nephrotic see the nephrotic function we use ivu intravenous urography or for renal uh, for vesicular embolus intravenous urography okay this is called interventional radiology example of diagnostic and therapy diagnostic we already discussed therapeutic means for just oncology radio radio therapist that is okay then another question is classify bone tumor bone tumor to you know, classify bone tumor it is bone tumor classified into benign and malignant benign means bones take origin from ost bones is called osteoma benign and malignant is Osteosarcoma. Origin from blood vessel is benign form is angioma and malignant and form is angiosarcoma. If it is undifferentiated, then it is called unshaped benign tumor, undifferentiated malignant tumor. If it is dental tumor, then odontoblastoma. If it is from fibrous tissue, fibroma, fibrosarcoma. It is from synovial tissue. Benign form is synovioma, another one is synovial sarcoma. It is fibrous tissue, fibroma, fibrosarcoma. Okay. Bone tumor. Again, another classification is it is benign and malignant. Another one is what the type of malignant bone tumor. Malignant bone tumor classified into primary and secondary. Primary tumor is called primary malignant bone tumor, and secondary one is called secondary origin. Primary there is five type. According to severity or according to osteosarcoma, young sarcoma, multiple myeloma, chondrosarcoma, fibrosarcoma. I repeat again osteosarcoma, young sarcoma, multiple myeloma, chondrosarcoma, fibrosarcoma. Okay? And secondary tumor is takes origin from another place and deposit in the bone. Like from thyroid, from breast, lungs, prostate, kidney, and jet. All type of type of osteolytic bust, but in case of posterior carcinoma, it is 90% osteoplastic and 10% osteolytic. Other tumor is bones osteolytic and 90% osteolytic and 10% osteoplastic. So in posterior carcinoma, it is different. 90% is Osteoblastic and 10% is osteolytic. Okay. And the portion of the question is write down the radiological fissure findings of osteosarcoma. It is already discussed. I will repeat again. Is osteolytic and osteoblastic, and it is some bust appearance and formation triangle is found. It is for osteosarcoma found in when the first season of the bone, and most common is 10 to 20 years of age. Okay. Different pathological factors. You know what the positive pathological factors already I discussed. Mm -hmm. Another question is: 25 years old man present with you a discharging sinus in his right upper leg. He had history of trauma followed by painful swelling in his right leg. What is your professional diagnosis? Okay, it is a a 25 years old, five year old man, old patient, male patient, present with a discharging sinus in his right upper leg. He had a history of trauma, followed by pain swelling in his right leg. What is your provisional diagnosis? My provisional diagnosis is, is a osteoconic pyogenic osteomyelitis. What is osteoconic pyogenic osteomyelitis? It is post operative, post traumatic, post intuitive, and sickly of acute osteomyelitis. I repeat again, it's post operative. That's why during operation theater, we always ask you, student, you take a far place, you take a stand far place, far place. It's post operative. Instruments are not autoclave implementation, sterilized, then develop osteomyelitis. Post operative, post traumatic, post infective, and sickly by good osteomyelitis. The four causes of chronic rising osteomyelitis. Okay? Name the investigation you would suggest to confirm your diagnosis. For confirm diagnosis, needs MRI, but patient, patient is poor, we'll do an X ray. X ray. X ray. And if, 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 we, if we want, you can go do the sinogram. And also, the other investigation is blood for 
CBC, in case of CBC, CBC, and new people count is raised, and new raised, yes, are raised, and new percentage is increased. And blood for culture and sensory test, and MRI, yes. Okay. Write down the pathogenesis of this condition. Pathogenesis of this condition means organism risk, organism first risk the hemorrhagic root through the metaphysis of the long bone and develop pus. When pus develop, the, we know the blood is supplied, bone, long bone is supplied by the industrial vessel in two to two, two third of the cortex and and, uh, and outer part, one third of the part is supplied by the vessels from the periosteum through so diffusion. So when pus is accumulated inside the medullary cavity, is in, in medullary cavity pressure is raised and blood cannot enter due to zero prioritized circulation in this pressure in the medullary cavity. So this portion of the bone is becomes gradually dead. And when pus accumulate more. Traversing the haversial canal and pass accumulate under the peristium. And peristium is strip up from bone. That's why the outer cortex of the outer third cortex takes division from the peristium. It is also depleted. Peristium has three layers: outer fibers, middle vascular, and inner cellular. Inner cellular layer has the capacity to grow bone till the Middle layer is circling vascular, outer layer is fibers. Okay. And when this middle cavity cannot supply and outer portion of the cord is also deprived of supply and this portion has become bone dead, it's called sequestral. And more pass accumulate it towards the pedestrian supply and finally it is a double decision sinus. How will you treat this patient? patient? I will treatment plan. I will assess the patient clinically and radiologically. Clinically means if patient is anemic, I will blood trans transfusion. If patient is malnourished, I will take the take take the food and 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 if it's infected, then I will provide uh, antibiotics for improving the condition of the bone and. Radiological means I will see the patient is sufficient in gluecum is formed or not. In gluecum means formation of bone surrounding the sequestrum. What is sequestrum? Sequestrum is a dead piece of bone in the living body. What is sequestrum? Sequestrum is a dead piece of bone in the living body. So when sufficient in gluecum is formed, and sequestrum is separated from the bones, then we will go for different treatment. Sequestrum and socialization. Socialization and sequestrum. Till the formation of sequestrum, we will support the bone by, a, by using a plaster or external fusitor or using the support, using elbow bag or telephone. Okay? The heading is, I will treat the patient, I will assess the patient clinically and radiologically. Clinically, if patient is anemic, I will correct an anemia by, by blood transfusion. If patient is infected, I will provide blood transfusion. If patient is malnourished, I will provide, provide supplement or nutritious saline for this is amino acid or fatty acid to improve the condition of the patient. And radiologically. Radiologically, I will observe the sufficient involucrum is formed and sequestrum is separated from the bone. What is involucrum? Formation of new bone surrounding the sequestrum. What is sequestrum? Sequestrum is a dead piece of bone. Then we will go for removal surgery. And treatment is socialization and sequestration. Another question is, it is January 2016, there is a clinical feature of osteosarcoma. 
क्लिनिकल फीचर ऑफ ऑस्टियोसार्कोमा ऑस्टियोसार्कोमा मींस दिस इज मेलिनेंट ट्यूमर प्राइमरी मेलिनेंट ट्यूमर ऑफ द बोन दिस टेक प्लेस इन मेटाफाइसिस ऑफ द लॉन्ग बोन एज इज 10 टू 20 इयर्स अराउंड द मोस्ट कॉमन अराउंड द अराउंड द मेटाफाइसिस ऑफ द नी दैट मींस लोअर एंड ऑफ द फीमर एंड अपर एंड ऑफ द टीबिया क्लिनिकल फीचर पेशेंट इज डेवलप स्वेलिंग इट इज शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन एंड इनगर्स वेन इज विजिबल and on or sometimes patient may patient may present with pathological fracture pathological fracture already discussed patient fracture of bone the bone already in disease okay and short history short history the next question is you know what the different option different treatment option of for giant cell tumor of bone the treatment option of Giant cell tumor of the bone. Already I discussed the giant cell. It is increase number of nucleus and increase size of the cell. It is called giant cell tumor. Treatment option. If the small size only cutis. Treatment option. There is several treatment option. Is incision and cutis. And incision. Other option is increase incision, cutis and bone graft. Another option is incision, cutis, chemical cauterization using phenol for chemical cauterization. And, and, and another option is treatment and option is in, in uh, uh, cutis and bone graft that means autograft autograft means we can take the bone from same patient or other option is incision cutis with allograft allograft means patient uh, taking graft from another man or another species allograft or we can do the incision keratis by using allograft and autograft mixed and also another option is we can use treatment option keratis bone graft with allograft autograft and bone cement bone cement is methyl methacarbonate we use for filling the defect in large cavity another option is turn o plastic and oplasty in case of distal femur or proximal tibia with the same portion of portion of the bone we can take from proximal or distal and turn we can turn it and it is called turn oplasty for distal radius we can use we can use the centralization we remove the we remove the distal portion of the radius and fix the ulna in center and center is called centralization translocation means same portion of the radius is removed for distal for humor for for giant cell tumor in the distal radius and at the same level we can cut the ulna and proximal uh, ulna is is ulna is distal ulna is fused with Yes, it is called translocation. Treatment option of write down the short in treatment of pa acute pyogenic osteomyelitis in children. Already I discussed the children. Are the types of fracture of proximal femur in elderly people? Proximal femur that means intertogenary fracture or fracture neck of femur. What are the type of fracture in proximal femur in elderly people? There are two types of fracture: is intertogenary fracture or fracture neck of femur. Intertogenary fracture and neck femur fracture again divided in different types. For you, is only neck of fracture neck of femur and fracture intertogenary fracture. Okay. What are the treatment option of fracture neck femur in adult, neck femur in elderly, and intertogenary fracture in all age? Already I discussed. Another post question is a 65 years old man presented with intermittent claudication followed by rest and a non-healing ulcer in his right leg. What is the professional diagnosis? It is peripheral vascular disease. This is called PVT. What other history you will take from this patient? Other history means take 
smoking history and how many stick how many cigarette or takes per day and this chronication distance that means how far working patient feel pain this is more important and also taking diabetic atherosclerosis and also taking history of any weight lifting okay in order to invest name the investigation you would suggest to reach the diagnosis is duplex ultrasonography or color doppler so write down the medical treatment of this patient medical treatments means advice patient patient counseling if you want to you want to save save your leg you must stop your smoking stop smoking stop smoking and vasodilator you can use vasodilator you can for ulcer you can use antibiotics and regular dosing and and activity modification that means the patient is working person working for earning you have to work they need then then they need sense of the job it's called sense of activity and take rest on start clean okay Uh, we are at the <clears throat> at almost end of the discussion uh, today discussion I, i don't know you are feeling uh, you are enjoying or feeling bored uh, mm, I, i think you are enjoying most of you Another, another, another one. one question January 18 January 18 classify fracture both clinical and logical clinical means classification of fracture clinical means in open fracture is it open fracture or closed fracture Closed fracture is called simple fracture. Open fracture is called compound fracture. And radiological already discussed. What do you mean by pathological fracture? Already discussed. The fracture of a bone, the bone already been diseased. What are the primary source from where bone metastasis occurs? That means what are the secondary tumor? That means primary site is taken from thyroid, lungs, breast, prostate, kidney, and GI tract. Classified fracture neck tumor already discussed. Right. The management of neck fracture in elderly already discussed. Is the complication of poisoning osteomyelitis? Is the bacteria responsible for acute osteomyelitis? And children. List the bacteria responsible for acute osteomyelitis in children. This organism is pile Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus pneumococcus, Salmonella, Shigella, Proteus. Or in case of new net, new net or infant, develop which organism responsible? is hemophilus influ influenza it is a complication of pyogenic osteomyelitis pyogenic osteomyelitis in acute chronic pyogenic osteomyelitis develops pathological fracture bone shortening or lengthening stiffness of the joint and deformity of the bone okay and sinus tract malignancy and amyloidosis Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Today my class is completed, and next time, and I will meet you okay, very soon. Nice.